Hello and welcome to Baseballogy, where we look at the current Hall of Famers and discuss their worthiness of induction. As always, I don't believe anyone should be booted from the Hall of Fame, but I do enjoy discussing these players and their rankings. Today we look at an interesting case in terms of the history of the Hall of Fame, as well as one of the darkest incidents in baseball's history. Today we look at former White Sox catcher Ray Schock. Uh, no, that's uh, that's Roy Schock. He is neither related to Ray Shock nor is Ray Shock. Please try again. That's better. Let's go. Shock was one of the first examples in history of the defensively important catcher, and much like Johnny Bench would be credited with doing several years later, Shock helped revise how people would come to play the position. Shock was one of the first catchers to back up the bases on infield plays, even becoming the first catcher to record a putout at each base. Popular opinion in the 19 teens was that Shock was the premium defensive backstop in the game. What did the numbers say? While well, advanced numbers for catchers are difficult to judge, defensive numbers themselves tend to vary much more than offensive numbers, and even more so for catchers. Still, when Shock retired, he was worth plus 99 defensive runs. Among all catchers, that value was good for second all-time to Charlie Bennett, who was worth over 160 defensive runs. Shock also set the record for putouts, with over 7,000 of them, and double plays for catchers, and second in assists while recording fewer than 100 passed balls. Shock played catcher at one of the most difficult times for catchers given the equipment and rougher playing style of the game and it's easy to see how he could be considered the best defensive catcher of his generation. Unfortunately, any value Shock added to the game defensively was mitigated by being a near-consistent black hole offensively. Shock put up a pitiful slash line of 253, 340, 316 in his career. Know how well that was offensively? It resulted in a WRC Plus of only 88. 12% worse than league average. <sighs> Look, catchers have a lower requirement of offense due to the stress of the position, but that's still pretty bad. He posted above average numbers in three of the first four years of his career. Then he didn't put up another good WRC Plus until seven seasons later, and wouldn't put up another good WRC Plus for the remainder of his 18-year career. That makes four years out of 18 that he had a league average offensive profile or better. I don't think I need to say more about how bad Shock was offensively. Obviously not good enough for the Hall of Fame. No, uh, this is normally where I would end things for the video and give out the hint for next time. Yet there are two more important things to talk about with Shock's placement in history. First is the team he played for. Shock was a member of the 1919 Black Sox team, where eight members of the White Sox, including Shoeless Joe Jackson, were banned for life for taking bets in exchange for throwing the World Series. The ban came down following the 1920 season. While the court system would clear all eight members of the team from charges, Commissioner Landis still decided on banning them for life. The scandal had a profound effect on the game, as fans were very unhappy about seeing some of their favorite players banned, as well as losing faith in the game itself. Shock's hard-nosed play was one of the ways that helped heal the game, and was one of the driving forces of his selection. Also, probably a little bit to stick it to the eight players who betrayed the game. The second point for Shock was what he did following his retirement from the game at, as a Major League player. Shock remained active in the game until he was 72 years old. He served as a manager and scout, but primarily gained fame for serving as a coach for Purdue Baseball, almost 50 years after his debut in 1912. Shock's involvement for the game for more than 50 years makes his induction understandable, and to me, more than justifies his enshrinement. Thanks for watching today's episode on Ray Shock. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about him. Was I too harsh? Did I miss something that makes him a good pick for the haul? Let's talk about him below. If you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button so you can get updates on the next video. Also in the comments, leave a note about who you think the next player is going to be. Here's your hint. Before Joe Madden, this was the last manager to guide the Cubs to the promised land of a championship. I'll see you next time.